Hello Libra, this is Queen Sunkiss with Sunkiss Spiritual Consulting and we are here to give you your monthly reading for the season of Gemini. Alright, so basically we are moving into the season of Gemini. This is a season of, you know, flirty communication, just lighthearted energy. It's also a season of transition because we are coming to the end of spring. Also, it's a couple of planets that are also making their moves um, in the season of Gemini into the sign of Gemini, okay? Mercury being one of them, which is Gemini's ruler. So, Mercury is going to be quite at home. So, things like commerce and... Um, business deals, contracts, things of that nature. All these things are going to be um, basically at their best position, even though even your day-to-day -day travel, unless, of course, you know, you have these placements, adversity uh, placed in your own natal chart. That is what we are looking at as far as this energy. Also, um, Venus is moving out of its home of Taurus and it's going into the sign of Gemini. So you can look for, um, basically again, flirty communication, maybe new love talks of starting a new relationship, um, very lucrative business deals coming to you being in the negotiation or even in contract or being started with this particular energy. But what we want to see is how you know, Libra is going to do during this season of Gemini. It's just going through and making sure all our cards are turned up right because we don't want to give you any reversals that you do not deserve. <laughs> okay? And we're going to go ahead and we're going to shuffle the cards. And as we're shuffling, we want to ask the spirit of the cards to please come through and bring us a message. Give us a message. Show us what is and will be for the sign of Libra in the season of Gemini. Show us what is and what will be for the sign of Libra in the season of Gemini. Okay? Go ahead and get shuffled. We can shuffle until the spirit tell me to stop. Sometimes I get known through the cards and I think that's it. All right, let's get started. Here is your first house, the house of I am. The second house is the house of your resources. Third house is third house of communication. Fourth house is home. Fifth house is basically entertainment. Sixth, sixth house is the house of work, act, and service. Seventh house is the house of partnerships, also the house of your sun sign, Libra. Um, the eighth house is the house of death and regeneration. The ninth house is the house of abstract learning and foreign travel. Tenth house is your public standing and your career. Eleventh house is hopes and fears and friendships. And the twelfth house is the spiritual house of karma, self undoing, self sabotage, and spiritual messages. So let's get into it, Libra, and see what we have going on. Coming in. <coughs> In the house of I am, you come in with the page of cups. Interesting card because pages bring messages. So one thing you get to see is people are expecting you to deliver some good news to them. All right? You are being looked at as a messenger. And because of your fresh outlook on life and your humor and knowing how um, powerful, you know, it is to laugh, you know, <laughs> Uh, people look to you for good news, okay? Also, look here. This could also be a sign of pregnancy. Somebody could see you as pregnant. You could see yourself as pregnant. Keep that in mind. This is a birth card. Moving on to the second house. Uh-oh. We're looking at some type of sabotage, some backstabbing of some sort when it comes to how you acquire your wealth and your resources, Okay. So when you see this, of course, you see this man. He has nine swords in his back. And, um, uh-oh, give me one second. Give me one second. Sorry, Libra. We just had this together already. But, um, 
as you can see, this man has been stabbed in his back several times, but he will not die from it. He will see a new day and a new beginning, unfortunately. Some of you could be looking at the prospect of death in the way that you acquire your resources and you will be looking at things to um, um, turn around, come into um, a new deal. Um, consequences of past actions could be coming back to bite you in the butt. Also, remember that Venus is also the sign of justice, Libra. You know, Libra balances the scale. And Venus is also um, your ruler. Well, um, you share rulership. Venus, yeah, Libra shares rulership with the sign of Taurus. And that is where um, Venus is currently sitting. But close to the beginning of the month, or the end of the season, Venus will be moving into the uh, house of Gemini. So you got some justice coming to you around your resources. If you've done something crazy at work, go ahead and get to know that there is some retribution coming. You are about to get the consequences for whatever that is, okay? In the third house, we have communication. Very interesting, especially since we see that Venus will be moving over into uh, Gemini. And in the house of Gemini or the house of communication, you come in with the hermit. The hermit is talking about looking inside for the answers, doing some soul searching. So whatever is going on, you have to do some soul searching to find the answer to whatever the question is. Nobody outside of you is going to have the answers to what these questions are. And while this is a season where people tend to be chatty and very open and 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 happy and free it's really a time for solitude for you libra it's not a time for you to be bouncing around and having conversations with any and everybody it's really a time of self-reflection when we get back to the fourth house which we're talking about you know your home and your early childhood things of that nature we have the lover's card what we have here is a conflict there is going to have to be a resolution of some sort whether it be um, love versus um, career or work or this any type of um, um, conflict that you may be facing as far as home life. You're going to have to make a decision between the two in order for to, the conflict to resolve. It's basically telling you that you need to realign your priorities, especially as far as how things affect your household and how they don't affect your household, okay? So, uh, just keep that in mind. With the sixth house, or no, the fifth house. Ooh, this is really interesting because the sixth house is usually where you find your entertainment and things that you like to do. This includes uh, things like sex, okay? But here you have pulled up the Hierophant. The Hierophant is ruled by Taurus, okay? So, Taurus is kind of like your sibling sign because both of you guys are ruled by the planet Venus. But we are looking at, you know, having good advice, even a marriage or a union. You know, try to have more fun in your marriage if you are married, Libra. If you are not, you know what I'm saying, try to move in a way that's going to bring you approval even if that means that you have to conform because... What you need is, what you're looking for is an opportunity to study up, up under a person that's going to make you better. So, you want to look out for these things, all right? Now, um, in the sixth house, this is works in service. We're looking at the tower. We're talking about other destructive energy, and this is Mars energy. Again, Mars is also sitting in the house of cancer, so, you know, it's going to look like whatever you have to prioritize and whatever you have going on is going to look like choosing one or the other is going to destroy the one that you do not choose. This is not really the case. It may feel that way. It may feel like that for a while because this is a major arcana card, especially if it's pertaining to your job. Some of you may experience a job loss or, you know, just a change that you may not like gonna be sudden it's just not gonna feel good 
But do know that it is part of you having to make um, new changes and prioritize what you have going on in your life. All right? In the seventh house, house of partnerships, these could be romantic or they could not be romantic. You know how they go. Anyway, we're looking at the temperance card. We are talking about balance and moderation here. Whenever you see temperance, of course, it's a major arcana energy. This is something that you are going to have to push and exact for a long time um, to get more clarification about exactly what this card means. We'll go over here and see what, what's happening in that ninth house according to this spread. But basically, it's you having to utilize some self-control, okay, to get what you have wanted. So, um, if you looking for, um, something that you've been working on to come into fruition, then you need to make sure that you are moving in a way that brings harmonious energy to all parties involved. Some of you would expect to, can expect to see, um, you know, uh, wealthy partnerships, wealthy marriages, or romances develop within your, um, circle within the people around you as well okay let's move on to one two three four five six seven eight the eighth house death and regeneration you come in with the three of pentacles the three of pentacles is capricorn energy so we got capricorn with scorpio <sighs> that's kind of tough but at the same time if you are a hard worker then y'all can work together and get things moving and get things done. How do you rebuild things that have been destroyed? You work with the people around you to make sure that things are getting done. That is the essential nature of this card. When you see the three of pentacles, know that teamwork always makes the dream work. Okay? And over here in this ninth house, back over here to temperance, what we are looking at is commerce. Also, note the three. We go back over here to this house of communication which is the ruling um, um, energy for this particular season. We're looking at commerce. So commerce is going to be well for you, but you have to make sure that you are creating harmonious energy once again. Do not be over-aggressive in your actions. As Sagittarius is fire energy. You need not be too aggressive in what you're doing, but you need not sit and be stagnant. As far as this hermit is um, concerned, it's not telling you not to move. It's just saying while you are moving, make sure you are observing and taking self-reflection of yourself and why you are choosing the actions that you choose. Okay? Tenth house, your career and your public standing, how people see you, your public reputation and things of that nature, you come in with the six of pentacles. And when we see the six of pentacles, we're talking about prosperity prosperity in a way that you are able to share with other people however you see that some people get something and some people don't and it seems as if um this is justice so understand that everybody is not going to be able to reap the benefits of whatever is coming to you and that is fine because the scales are balanced and with you being libra the scales i mean <laughs> You're pretty much going to move in a balanced way, okay? So, being able to help people, and if you can help somebody, if you find yourself in a position to be able to help somebody, especially career-wise, go ahead and do that because it's going to be very beneficial for you. In the 11th house, you come in with the 10 of pentacles. So, not only do you have great things going on as far as your reputation and in your career, you also have great things going on as far as your hopes, your dreams, your friendships, and your relationships. Because of who you are and what you do, Libra, you are looking at prosperity, wealth, and close relationships in the family. Don't be surprised if someone in the family offers you something like money, a family heirloom, or anything of that nature because of this card. Your hard work, your meticulousness, because this is Virgo energy, and Virgo likes to be organized and all this. And because of the way you organize things and prioritize yourself, it's going to put you in a place where not only do you get this place simply because of who you are, 
you also get this place because of all the work that you do that makes any sense and then the last house our 12th house of the zodiac is where we find ourselves undoing in our spiritual messages and here you come in with the king of swords okay so there's a little bit of conflict and whatever conflict that may arise you are able to go ahead and mitigate that because you are a very authoritative and authoritative and assertive person okay if there are any legal matters or anything to come up you'll be able to handle this and if it's not you then there will be a male that will be able to help you out because when you have things like this <clears throat> paired with temperance pair with the Hierophant, okay? All these things kind of go together. They kind of tie into each other. So we got the 12, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, the 5th. Um, make sure that when you go out and you have fun, you're not putting yourself in a position to have to deal with legal activities because basically what's going to happen is you are looking at a whole lot of balance here. Justice will be served. Okay, so if you make sure that you're doing everything the correct way, you won't affect all the prosperity and the good things that are coming to you. You won't interrupt your work process so that you can go ahead and move to where you need to do. Do understand, though, around your job, your career, you are looking at some type of conflict there. It's Mars energy, but it's all Mars is also in the sign of cancer right now, so... You could be emotionally tied to whatever this thing is, or it could be trouble on the home front. But as long as you prioritize things, keep things organized, everything should work out swimmingly for you during Gemini season, making the transition into summer. So if you like this video and you want your personal, you want a personal reading, please click the link in the description box. Go ahead, rate, and subscribe to this channel. And... <laughs>